ISRO is all set to create history with Chandrayaan 3 and there are several aspects of this project which is uh, of interest to people and space enthusiasts as well. To decipher it, we have uh, Dr. Surinder Pal, distinguished scientist, former advisor to the Satellite Navigation Center. So right from the launch till both the deboost phases, uh, we have seen everything going according to the plan. Just a step left. What do you anticipate, sir? Well, I think uh, uh, I mean, what I feel is we will have a soft landing. We are already at the 25 kilometers perigee. So in around uh, 753 kilometers, you know, total distance from the point where the total uh, system is getting activated and to landing, it's around 753 kilometers. So first, uh, it will be brought down to 7.8 kilometers height and the velocity which is there of the order of six, more than 6,000 kilometers at that time will bring down to around 350 meters or so. And presently, it has got only the tangential velocity or what we call it horizontal velocity. It does not have a vertical velocity. So by coming to 7.8 kilometers, uh, some inclination will be given and vertical in velocity will be introduced. When we come to around 400 to five, uh, uh, between 500 to 100 meters, there will be no tangential velocity, only vertical velocity will be there. And since there are uh, equipments like a laser Doppler uh, velocity meter, uh, you know, there is a camera, so hazard uh, detection and avoidance camera, there is a cab and uh, uh, altimeter which will find out the uh, altitude or height within few centimeters. There is a laser altimeter which can give in less than a centimeter. So all these off and front cameras are there and of course there is enough propellant as compared to two. So it can even uh, hover it which was not there earlier. It can hover a whole site of 24, uh, 2.5 kilometers by 4 kilometers have been divided into grids mm. of all the order of uh, you know, 24 meters or less. And out of that uh, grids, 20, out of 20 grids have been chosen, out of 20 grids, 8 grids have been chosen in such a way that uh, any boulder mm. which is uh, more than 2 meters height uh, will be avoided and there should not be any shadow on it. At the same time, any crater which are created by the impacts, you know, there is a difference between crater and mare. Mm. So, you know, mare is the original one, craters are because of the, uh, you know, impact of the meteorites. And also, the, the, so that slope should not be more than 10 degree mm. and there should be 100 percent illumination. Mm. So these things will be taken care and from any site to go to next site, it's only 100 meters. Mm. So it will hover and what it has got enough fuel. Suppose if they are not able to land it, mm. then I understand that uh, on 27th another landing attempt can be done. Mm. Not only this, there is enough fuel, uh, it can go, in my opinion, it can go to an another orbit. It's my personal opinion. Mm. It can go to another orbit and another, uh, you know, I mean, what do you call it, uh, lunar uh, day, it can land. Mm. So that's one thing. And when it lands, everything will work um, fine mm. because its uh, total system is designed for three meters per second. Yeah. It's like this, you know, from 10 story building, you throw somebody, nothing will be left, you know, no bone will be left. Yeah. But here, everything will be there. Then as soon as it touches, there is a touch sensor, all the, uh, you know, propulsion, uh, the thrusters will stop. Mm. It can land with four thrusters, two thrusters, and there are eight small thrusters which can change their directions. Mm. So these are some of the important things are there. Mm. And uh, when it lands there, the impact can be absorbed mm. by the land. In three, suppose even go to three meters per second, that sort of vertical velocity, because there is no horizontal velocity. Mm. Then also it can, but it's uh, assumed that we will have uh, around 1.86, very safe landing. Also, so, in, in fact, the other interesting bit that I want to ask you is, uh, it will also leave an imprint of ISRO and Indian flag on the yes. surface of the moon. Yes, sir. Till now, we don't know whether the flag will be there or not, ah. but the rover, uh, rear wheels, you know, right wheel mm -hmm. has got a uh, ISRO emblem, left wheel has got the, uh, you know, our uh, Rajya mm -hmm. uh, Ashoka emblem. Yeah. So it will be left in when it goes up to 50 meters or so. And since the sand is very fine, so it, it can send can vary from 250 micrometers mm -hmm. microns to a few microns mm -hmm. and uh, in that one so imprints will be there since there is no atmosphere for centuries together those imprints will be there so uh, we will have our imprint there yeah. that's all
So the other crucial aspect here everyone is looking forward to is the kind of experiments that uh, the payloads both on the lander and the rover would be carrying out. You believe the insights from that is something that will uh, impact future missions of uh, ISRO, especially uh, lunar missions? Yes, first of all, we have got uh, six experiments, okay, two on the ro rover, three on the lander, one already there on the, uh, you know, uh, or, you know, uh, uh, propulsion module, which is doing. Now, let me tell you the shape, which is, uh, you know, it's a spectral polarimeter for uh, habitable Earth. You know, a spectrum, it will monitor it. So that's, in my opinion, as a technologist, very important. All are important. Hmm. So we can uh, study the spectrum of the Earth's, uh, you know, light, which is reflected light. And similarly, extraterrestrial uh, uh, intelligence, if you are looking for, if you are looking for extra planets, you know, in exosphere, where life may exist, this will help. If you go for the rover experiments, you know, it has got, uh, it will find out that uh, it has got uh, sources, six sources, which will put alpha particles, you know, mm -hmm. okay. And uh, any high energy particles or same pinches or something, X-rays come out. So, mm -hmm. X-rays will, X-rays have got different wavelengths. Mm -hmm. So, that is a characteristic of the material which is there. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Then, uh, all the, if you go to the uh, uh, lander side, there's Langmore pore probe, which will find out the, you know, ionospheric conditions, which is there at uh, maybe one meter or two meters height, or maybe five meters maximum. So that varies with time. Hmm. So that also it will be able to find out about this. Then another is that it will put a, it will lower down a seismometer. It's an accelerometer, very sensitive. So the moon quakes can be noticed. Hmm. Not only this, suppose there is an impact of a meteors that also hmm. can be noticed hmm. about this one. Then there is a, another thing is there, uh, you know, uh, you can uh, on the you can Im, you know, drill inside a hole, mm. and uh, we can find out what is the temperature uh, or thermal conditions or thermal conductivity of the moon surface. Mm. Uh, and uh, there is another one seventh experiment is there, which is not it's a NASA thing. Mm. It's put on the retro reflector, laser reflector reflector, and put on the lander. So NASA will can send a beam, mm. laser beam, and we on the varying orbital conditions, you can find out what is the exact distance. Mm. So that way we, we are contributing quite significantly for the overall thing. True. So the other aspect here is there's a lot of uh, keen interest in almost a competition of sorts between uh, Luna 25 mission of Russia and Chandrayaan 3. Not for the scientists, but for observers outside. Now that unfortunately Luna 25 has crashed, uh, what do you think uh, were the issues, sir? Many believe that the kind of uh, path that Luna 25 took did not leave much scope for any correction if there were issues. See, first of all, there is no competition between ISRO and uh, Roscosmos. Yeah. India and Russia, we are friends. I personally feel, and I think every scientist feels, that it was an unfortunate thing. It should have landed. It would have complemented the data. They had uh, almost similar experiments, mm -hmm. and it was to continue for one year because it is an RTG generator. Mm -hmm. While we have got a solar panels and our batteries are 63 ampere hours, we have changed it. Mm -hmm. Even our uh, uh, data rates are increased from 200 to 500 kilobits. Mm -hmm. And we have got <coughs> do S band and X band communication, but that would have continued for one year. Mm -hmm. So it would have complemented the total, uh, you know, uh, regular the data, okay, mm -hmm. about the moon surface, etc. And the telling that they assumed, a ro see, it's an automation, automatic station. It's like a robot. Mm. So the once command was given, and then it automatically it should have done it much better. Even they had a powerful rocket. That's why they went earlier. There is no competition. Okay, mm. it was decided to launch in 21, uh, 2021. They could not do it because they were supposed to Japanese payload should was supposed to be there. European payload was supposed to be there, but because of the geopolitical mm. condition, it is not there. So, now what has come a statement from the head of uh, Roscosmos that uh, one of the, uh, the engine, main engine failed. Mm. That's why it uh, crashed. So, engine can fail. I know anything can happen in the, in yeah. spite of taking all the precautions, even, uh, I mean, we are also cautious now. We should be cautious. We should keep our finger crossed and hopefully we'll land it. There is uh, nothing wrong with the Luna 25. Um, some. Well, some uh, hardware mistake, not even a software. 
Yeah. That's what the Mr. Yuri, who is the head of the Rasu Cosmos, yeah. has uh, commented. Yeah. But, sir, let's hope for uh, soft landing for Chandrayaan 3 and some great insights from the experiments. That was uh, Dr. Surinder Pal deciphering what Chandrayaan 3 means for India's future space, space missions.